Hi, Digital World. Uh, welcome back. We've been getting our Visual Studios fully downloaded. Uh, we're going to keep on going over some of our OpenCV functions and core data types. Um, so we went over the, the matrix and how to access individual pixels as well as uh, the matrix as a whole. So now what we're going to show you how to do is convert your video stream into a... Um, convert your video stream from your webcam into a matrix. So now you can use this matrix for anything too. It doesn't have to be a, a video stream. Um, there's a lot of functionality that's just as powerful as MATLAB. Uh, it might not be as user friendly, but you certainly can do the, the same types of things. But uh, what you use in OpenCV to access your webcam is a class called Video Capture. I think it's one one more of a long number of great, easily understood names coming out of the people that developed OpenCV, which is Willow, uh, Willow Garage. So you have video capture is going to be your class, and you can call that, I think the standard is going to be uh, cap and then zero. And so cap is just short for capture, and zero speaks to which camera you want to use. So on your basic laptop, uh, your webcam, the built-in webcam would be camera zero, but if you also have a USB cam plugged in, uh, that would be cam one. If you have a number of different webcams plugged in, you can actually access multiple webcams simultaneously using this uh, and just initializing a different number. Uh, and this just refers to which actual video uh, video object that you're uh, getting it from, which USB camera. So now CAP is going to have a number. It's got a bunch of member functions to it, a lot of really powerful stuff. I think basic uh, number one is some nice error checking. So if you hit it with an is open, CAP dot is open. Yeah. So if you do CAP dot is open, it's going to check and see whether or not the camera is actually open. And you can do something like, um, if not cap is opened, you know, return negative one um, or positive one, whatever you want to do. So just it's got some nice error checking built in. You can also perform pretty great uh, tweaks to your camera. Like you can set your frame rate, you can set your hue, your contrast, you can do white balancing, uh, and a number of different things directly that directly attaches to your hardware. Very similar to if you have a webcam, uh, there's some driver for your laptop, and you can change things like the contrast and the focus and the white saturation. Well, you can perform all of those functions with this cap object. So you use, uh, it's a setter and a getter. So if you say uh, cap dot get, now there's a whole list. And if you look up video capture on the OpenCV form, you type in OpenCV video capture um, class, it'll give you a whole list of what the different uh, enumerated objects are that um, the whole list of enumerated objects that you can use. And some of the, the main ones are uh, your frame rate. So it's stuff like CV, cap, prop. And it's all going to be this initial syntax, CV, cap, prop, all underscores with all capital letters. And it'll be something like cap, prop, F, P, S. And this would actually return what the native frames per second of the camera is. And, or you can do stuff like your uh, 4CC. So one of the other things is that's very important is how the camera is recording. It's there's a multitude of different data types for video. And a lot of cameras, they have different manufacturers and they'll actually record in a different format. So you want to find out what uh, the, the format is for your device 
You do CV, you have cap.get, CV cap prop for CC, and this will return the, it's a four letter string. So like for example, uh, for, for DivX, it'll be something like D, uh, V, I, X. It'll be something along these lines, and uh, but it'll just be DivX is what gets returned. So uh, now that we see how to how to get different objects, we'll talk about how to set them. It's literally uh, just about the same thing, but let's say you cap dot set CV cap prop uh, FPS. If you want to set yours to 24, all that you do is you put a comma at the end of the enumerated constant and you put in what the value is that you want to set it as. Uh, and this will allow you to change your your frames per second and a number of different things. And these constants aren't actually in a class, they're just globally defined, so you don't have to like do this. Oh. Exactly. No. Well, they they are, but so we'll get to the names. It's these are all in the CV namespace. So the same way, uh, some of you may have seen. Uh, we'll talk about more talk more about this when we get to back to Visual Studios. Uh, but the setting up, you still have to include your headers, your Open CV headers. Uh, there's a number of different ones. It's actually really easy to do with OpenCV 3.0, which is a really nice improvement that they did. Um, and you do use namespace CV. So the same way that you might have uh, using namespace STD, you'd also have using namespace CV. And for those of you that might want to do GPU programming, which is a very powerful tool, uh, it's kind of one of the things that OpenCV and Willow Garage have been pushing the envelope on because it's able to do much faster processing. Uh, you do using namespace uh, CV GPU, and it'll uh, include that namespace for you. So you do have a lot of namespaces here. So for me, if I start doing GPU programming, especially because the functions are very similar to the uh, CPU programming, I will use namespace CV and then just locally define when I'm using a GPU function uh, with my CV GPU colon colon. Um, and it would be something like GPU man. Uh, but, so you can get the object, you can set the object, and now when you actually get into reading the... Um, okay, so now what you do is erase this. So let's say we go here, and this is our main code, to now uh, put in, so we have a video capture object. Anybody want to take a guess what we're going to put that capture object into? Yeah, but... So, Matt, video. So now, if you want to do just a single image, you can just do cat, and you can use the, uh, the insertion operator is overloaded to allow for video capture and matrix objects. So you can do cat, uh, greater than, greater than frame, and now you will have a single frame from your USB webcam in this OpenCV matrix. And if you wanted to do the, the whole video feed, you would do something along these lines. Uh, you want to set up your, you could do it a number of different ways. You can either do four with a semicolon and another semicolon. Um, you can do while one, uh, you can do a number of different things, but uh, pretty much you just want to set this up into an infinite loop. And now every clock cycle or every uh, cycle of your loop a new frame will get piped in to the OpenCV matrix. Um, so now one of the things that you're going to want to think about is, well, how the heck do you break out of that loop? Uh, and Open Willow Garage, again, something that they thought of. So you use this object called uh, wait key. And pretty much this is standard in a lot of different libraries, but the OpenCV version is called wait key. And I would just do 30 is greater than or equal to zero. And now, if um, 
if a key is pressed, and you can set this to constant characters too. So you could set it to D or C. And now regardless of whatever else you press on the keyboard, only that letter will actually close out your program. But with 30, it's it'll just be pretty much it's uh, generic. So any character that you press for the most part will stop the program from running. Um, so, you know, if you just want to be angry and you smash your keyboard, you'll, you'll probably stop the process. Um, so, you know, so this is how we access the USB webcam. Then we check to see if it is open. We go into an infinite loop and we pipe the capture object, the video capture object into the open CV matrix. And then if uh, we want to stop the process, we press a key on the keyboard. So um, now in the matter of, so now there's one more thing that you're going to need to do if you want to actually visualize what you're seeing in your webcam. And that is imshow. So your imshow uh, class or your imshow function is going to be what actually takes this frame and puts it and displays it onto your screen. So you're going to give, and it's also really nice. It auto generates windows for you. Uh, in older versions of OpenCV, you had to allocate the memory for the screen and set what the size of the screen was and do um, all of these. And even though you could use like auto size, that would be adaptive, it was still a lot of overhead. And with the newer versions of OpenCV, all I have to do is say imshow um, my camera, and this will just be some string, and this will be what the title of your window frame will be, my camera, comma, frame. And this is going to be the source for what you're actually displaying. Close your parentheses, and you're good to go. Um, so now this will be this will actually show what your webcam is seeing directly on your terminal. Uh, so I'm going to pause this video for just a moment. Um, absolutely. See you, man. Um, okay, so so now we're back on the laptop, and we're gonna now that we have the desktop environment configured for uh, for OpenCV, we're gonna go ahead and configure Visual Studios for OpenCV. And even though it's just open, let's see see where. All right, so here we go. So we're gonna start up Visual Studios. Hmm. Studio, yeah. Visual Studio's program, Microsoft Vision, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to use Visual Studio, and yeah, it's just going to take a moment because it's starting up for the first time. Uh, so there's going to probably be a couple of um, things going on. Yeah, go ahead. So you absolutely can. Uh, OpenCV is very cross-platform. Um, you can use Linux, Apple. Uh, you could use, uh, well, I mean, Linux, Apple, Windows, those are probably your big three, and it's multiple Linux distributions. Uh, for this, it's, it's a different installation procedure because you do need to link your libraries to your folder, but if you're using, like, the GCC compiler, you can do that with a makefile um, pretty, in a pretty straightforward fashion. Cool. And, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so the question was, can you use different compilers to utilize OpenCV's functionality? Uh, you definitely can. Those are not covered in, in this tutorial, but if you want to stick around afterwards, we can see if we can get that going. Is there one in particular that you wanted to use it for? Well, so you need to have, I believe that you do need to have some type of compiler. So you could use the the text editor to develop, which is crazy, because and I know because that's what I did for the last project. Uh, but you could definitely do that. But I'm not sure if you're gonna get your nice color coded, in, like IntelliSense stuff that it'll know that it's an open CV function because you can't directly link the text editor to the open CV libraries. But for stuff like code blocks, Eclipse. Um, or the, the GNU compiler or your GCC compiler, you can definitely, definitely utilize OpenCV. 
So now we're back here. Um, the check for an updated license. Uh, you got one? Right, so let's see if mine will. Pardon? It's no, this is my Microsoft account. Um, yeah, you can change what your email address is that's linked to your Microsoft account. So I have, I know normally it's like, you know, at Microsoft.com, um, but I should be able to say yes. Okay. Killing me. Uh, I think I'm logged in with my Gmail account because that is my Microsoft account. So let's just see why I uh, can't remember what my password is, is what I'm guessing it is. Let's see. Bianca, so when you went to DreamSpark, did you, you had some account that you had to... Possibly. I'll tell you what. Do you want to? So, if you want to use Visual Studios, you'll have to do an account. Visual Studio. Visual Studio. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So now we've got Visual Studios back back up uh, up and running, and what we can do is do file. We're going to go ahead and open up a new project, um, and we're going to go down to. Visual C++, and I'm going to select a Win32 console application. Uh, the reason why I like the Win32 console application is because when my, I run my program, it will wait for me to input a key in the console before exiting it out. So it's if you don't, if you just do a blank presentation or a blank project, when you build your code and compile it, it's going to run it. And it's just going to stop it. If there's no errors, you're not going to know. Or if there's no errors, it'll just run right through. But you won't get any of your console feedback. Where maybe if you have a debug statement or something along those lines, or even for that matter, if you're outputting video, it will automatically hit the end key. But with the console application, it will continue to have the console in RAM until the user closes it out uh, by physically hitting one of the keys. So I'm going to just make this my first OpenCV. And now I am going to do an empty project. So <coughs> now to link OpenCV to Visual Studios, this is where, where it gets fun. So this right here, the Solution Explorer, is certainly your best friend. Uh, what you want to do is right click on it and go to Properties. Now, with Visual Studios, you have two different configurations. You have your, uh, your debug and your release. And it will show you which one is cu you're currently working on. And we want our, the changes that we're about to make to take place on all configurations. 
So we'll select that, and now we don't. Um, if you only had debug or only release selected, you would have to go back and do it for the other iteration. But by doing all configurations, you know, it just does both of them right off the bat. So the first thing that you do is click on your C, C++ um, folder, and we're going to expand that. And I'm going to pull up my little instruction guide, my notes. Okay, so you go to C, C++, and we're going to expand this, and we're going to click on Additional Include Directories, which is right here. And to this, um, we're going to click on Edit, and one moment. Yeah, so if you, I'll show that again, so you want to click on uh, the actual name of your solution. So Visual Studios, the projects, are called solutions. That's the name of, it's this whole folder where you have your debug files, your release files, your executable, and the name of that uh, you're going to want to right click on, and down at the bottom is going to be the properties, uh, properties tab. One moment. Okay, so um, now I'm going to go back. Well, I'm getting this ready. I'm going to go back to my system environmental variables because you're going to want to see that. Uh, where am I? Not in Viron. So we want to edit the system environmental variables. We're going to open up this uh, to get that going. And then we're also going to want to open up that OpenCV folder um, just so we can kind of get a good idea of what's going on. So So, um, so now for this, uh, the additional include directories, you're going to get to the include, uh, you want this. So this is going to have all of your header files. And um, if you recall, the, so now this, the command that you put into Visual Studios depends on what you set. Yeah, Visual Studio, it depends on the path that you set for your OpenCV dir. So ours is OpenCV build x86 vc12. So if I go to OpenCV build x86 vc12, uh, now I said I want to get back to the that include directory. So I go back, back, include. So I'm going to need two sets of double periods. And you can see here, now it's going to look like this. Um, bless you. So to access that, environmental variable that we set up you want to do dollar sign parentheses and um, then the name of it so it's dollar sign parentheses open cv underscore dir and you go back one folder back another folder and then include and this will set up uh your your header files so you click okay um that was preemptive but so we go back we're still in properties not not done just yet um, now so this sets up your your header files now you need to connect I believe it's your uh, DLLs and so we go to linker and you want to expand this file once again um, this this tab and we're looking for general and then you're looking for additional library so additional library directories right here and we're going to do the same thing that we did before where it's the dollar sign and uh, your open cv underscore dir close the parentheses and this one is just open cv underscore dir lib uh, and this will link your dll's um, so finally the the last thing that you do to set it up is your your lib files 
So if you go to input, um, now we have additional dependencies. And if you go all the way to the end, or if you just click on this box to highlight it, you'll have this arrow, and you can click edit, and it gives you a very nice way to do it. So now with this, uh, what we actually want to do, we have different sets for, <clears throat> um, it's different libraries that need to be added for debug and release. So we're going to do debug. Um, actually, first, I'm going to go right back up here, go and click on this. So now when I said, uh, when I hit OK before, and I open this back up, my configuration defaulted to the active. So now you can see if I click on release, I'll hit save. Well, now that additional library directory is not there. So I'm going to just go back and do uh, all configurations. And you'll see it says different options. Well, I'm just going to do opencv dir slash lib. And now all of the options will be set for that. So all of them. Um, so go back into input for the linker now, if I click on this. But so for this, we have different libraries for debug files and different libraries for release files. So I go to debug and click on edit. And OpenCV 3.0 is really nice because there's only two linker files. In OpenCV 2.4.9, which was the last major release, there were about 15. And you needed to have a different lib file for every one of the core class types. But with this, it's all taken care of in two. So you have OpenCV underscore TS 300. Uh, and this 300 speaks to the version of OpenCV. Um, if for other versions, you would have 2.4, something along those lines. So 300D, because this is the debug uh, library, then just dot lib, enter, and it's OpenCV underscore world 300D dot lib. And I'm going to copy these. Uh, so that's okay. So now that's my debug libraries are set. And when you do them with the new line, if you edit and you just put them on new lines, it automatically appends a semicolon. Now, if you do it directly in this box, you need to make sure that you add a semicolon in between each one of these libraries. So, yeah. So it's that. So it's OpenCV underscore TS 300 dot lib. OpenCV underscore world 300 dot lib. And good. Yeah. All right. And copy that because now we're going to go to release and it's going to ask if you want to save the changes. You certainly do. So now with this one, uh, we're going to do the same deal where we edit and we hit control V. Now we, the only thing that we change is we remove the D and that way you are only using the release libraries for the release file. So hit OK. You're set up. Now, a great way to test it is you're going to just go add. Okay, so the, you want to do uh, just for release, there's no D. For debug, it gets the D. If you change one of them, it will update all configurations automatically. So, like, if either one of debug or release changes your all configurations, it'll say different options available. Um, so, now we're going to have our main.cpp. And this is just going to be a great way to test and make sure that OpenCV installed properly. Um, so, I'm going to go to my downloads and I have, have my little program that I already set up. Um, okay. So um, what we're going to try to do is just include one of our OpenCV files. So this is the OpenCV syntax uh, where th there's OpenCV and there's OpenCV2. Um, each one of these file paths houses different libraries. The main ones that I've used are Core, Im, uh, ImageProc, 
and Hi GUI. Um, there's also a, there's I believe eight other ones or somewhere around there, and that's how you get into um, your different classes of image recognition and image manipulation. You use different header files. So we're going to go back to Visual Studios. Really, it's just including this, and then I should be able to say. Int main return zero. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I right clicked on source, clicked add, did a new item, and when prompted, I selected the C file. So now that we have this, I should be able to hit control function F5, and this is going to build first time, and fingers crossed main.cpp and it's built so it built and it didn't explode which means that OpenCV is installed and configured on this machine so now let's have some fun and actually do some things with OpenCV that kick butt and we're going to open up a camera stream so we'll go to video capture cap zero and we're going to go so ah, so I only install, I only included this one include. So let me include a couple more. Um, so your standards are going to be uh, pound include OpenCV2 and its core, uh, core.hpp. And this is why I like, you know, for all of the downsides of um, Visual Studios, particularly the size, the IntelliSense that it offers is just incredible. I barely even need to know where my folders are, what they're called. OpenCV2, um, and this is all of your OpenCV header files and folders right there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so we're going to do uh, Hi GUI. Um, or, so we did Hi, do, Hi GUI, we did Core, and we're going to do Image Proc. So if we go to the Image Proc folder, press Tab, Image Proc.hppp, or HPP, and, and then we're done there. Yeah. I'm, going to do my uh, forward slashes here um, the autocorrect did make them back but so so now we have these and yeah yep so using the namespace of OpenCV should help us along nicely and now Video capture turns light blue, and there's a video capture object. Um, and so we have our cap zero. This is going to access the webcam. Uh, we'll initialize our matrix. We'll call it my vid. And now I'm going to go my for loop, <coughs> make it an infinite for loop, and go ahead and get my semicolons going. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and pipe cap right into my vid call that that um, and we can go ahead and do our error checking uh, you know say if uh, not cap dot is opened return one and so now we're back in here we have cap going into my vid we'll do im show and we'll say the webcam comma and my vid colon and now this should be putting the webcam stream right to the screen and here it is ah so the webcam is currently being utilized by the uh, recording software so that's why it's not showing the video that's going on there it's already in use but luckily for us, I have this other webcam right here, right here. So we'll plug it in. I'm going to exit out of this. This is going to escape. Close that program. Because it did open it. It was just busy, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Okay, so now I switched the 
the capture number to cap one, and I should be able to hit control uh, function F5. Yeah. Okay. Actually, so it's not recognizing it by that because the driver device software is still installing. So in just a moment, I'll have access to that. Uh, and just for proof of concept, I'm going to pause this, the recording for a moment. All right. Hi, everybody. So to wrap things up, we're going to talk about the concept of thresholding. And thresholding can take on a number of different forms. We're going to talk about pure binary thresholding. And what this allows your computer to do is based on color inputs, uh, you can tell your computer to only look for a specific color. So if you have some... Uh, some image, and for me, we're in Robotics Club, uh, we look for buoys. So a great example is if you have, let's say you have a, a red buoy and you have a green buoy. Now, of course, this is an awful example because I only have the black Sharpie. But let's just pretend that this is red and this is green. So now the idea is that you want to be able to detect the, you want to be able to tell the red from the green. So what you have to do with your computer is set up a uh, different matrix um, with thresholded values for each one of those colors. So from the same, you have your, um, you know, your, your cap zero and cap goes into frame and we have our mat frame. So once we do our... Uh, transformation so we can do our CVT color and we go from our frame and we're going to set up a couple more matrices so we have frame I'm going to call it thresh green and I'm going to set thresh red got it Awesome. <laughs> um, okay, so we have our CVT color, and we're going to take in the source is going to be frame, and the destination for this is going to be threshold in green. Green, and we're going to apply the, we'll say, yeah, um, UGR to Y, CR, CB. So we can convert to that. So now what you want to do is we have uh, this new matrix, which is threshold green. And I don't know if anybody can read my handwriting. Not at all. Okay, so. I'll tell you what I can do. <laughs> Write it. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to using Visual Studios because my handwriting is chicken scratch. So now I'm going to open up my project. And it's my first open CV. And this has all of my settings already saved. So let me go actually. So this is what I was working on. Okay, so okay, so this is a little sample program that I put together. Now, with with th thresholding, um, you can do some cool stuff. So, CVT color. Yeah. So, all right. Um, I'm going to stop the recording on this now because I can't do both. <laughs>